Hey guys, just a reminder, if you want to hear all of these wonderful B Plus podcast episodes completely ad-free, make sure you head over to Patreon or Podbean, where we are the featured podcast this week. You can subscribe for as little as a dollar a month, up to $10 a month, where anything you want to help us with, it really helps out. It's going to help us grow the site. It's going to help us redesign some things. And everything that we get through this and through the advertising as well is all going straight back into the podcast so that we can get Aussie Graps out there for the rest of the world to hear about, for the rest of the world to see, so we can grow this mission of watch global, support local, and build indie wrestling. So if you want to be a part of that and get some really cool rewards like call-in shows, bonus episodes, ad-free like I mentioned, then head over to patreon.com slash the B plus and subscribe today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the Hold one, Andre. You're not good at this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Oh my God. Sorry, no speak English. Sorry. Goodbye and good night. Hold two, on bar. It's still real to me, damn it. Sorry. Yeah. This is the worst. I've ever been in. Fold three. Tomas covers. Three handle. Family Redunzo. Mamma mia. And now. Unchained.media presents. The B Plus Podcast. Greg Unchained. It's me, Austin. It was me all along, Austin. Number four, Armbar. I will never retire. I still got 200 more. I got 200 more holes to lift. All right, ladies, gents, and non-binary friends, welcome to another B-plus podcast. I'm your host, Greg Unchained. Today is Friday. You know what that means. It's our favorite day here at the B-Plus Podcast. It is Aussie Grap States today. We sit down to take a look at everything happening in the world of Australian professional wrestling. And of course, I also sit down each week to speak with an Aussie grappler or grappler adjacent person. This week, I was supposed to catch up with Vixen uh, after she returned from Japan. When I initially scheduled the interview, I didn't realize she was heading to Japan. And then when uh, we organized it and we... Unfortunately, that interview didn't pan out. But luckily, I did get an interview with lover boy Lockie Hendricks as he was in Adelaide last week for Rise to Glory with Adelaide Championship Wrestling. So I sat down backstage, I had a quick chat with lover boy Lockie Hendricks and that one, you're going to hear that one this week and we will catch up with Vixen in the coming weeks so that we can talk to her about her Japan trip, we can talk to her about things that she's got coming up and uh, all, all that sort of stuff. So Vixen will be on the horizon. So for anyone who I told, yeah, we're talking to Vixen this week, it's unfortunately not happening this week. Loverboy Lucky Hendrix is the one you're going to hear, which is great because Loverboy is amazing and you get to hear him call me a Momo and stuff. So, you know, that's always fun. But first, I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we get to the interview, let's take a quick look at this week in Aussie Graps News. Starting as I often do with Aussies Overseas. Uh, This last weekend saw Robbie Eagles head back to Japan for New Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honor on a rising. He had some tag matches with his partner Taiji Ishimori, taking on the likes of Jonathan Gresham, Jushin Thunder Liger and others. He also had a one-on-one match with Marty Skull, which is a must-see match if you're a fan of Robbie Eagles, if you're a fan of Marty Skull. It's a eight or nine minute sprint of a match where they just go all out balls to the wall. It was really fun. And I'm looking forward to these guys doing more. I think that, you know, Robbie, everything I've heard, like Dave Meltzer put him over. uh, The Voices of Wrestling guys were putting him over. Everything I've listened to, every podcast that covered the weekend, every website that covered the weekend said that uh, both Jonathan Gresham and most importantly for us here, Robbie Eagles really impressed in this last weekend. And you got to think after such a great weekend, Robbie Eagles is a lock for best of the Super Juniors when that rolls around this year. So we're we'll keeping our eyes on that. But he's not the only Australian showing up in New Japan Pro Wrestling. The New Japan Cup starts next week. You can hear all about this stuff if you subscribe to the B Plus podcast because we do uh, we do an episode in the middle of the week called King of Sportscast where we talk about 
all the going-ons in what we call the King of Sports universe, that is New Japan Pro Wrestling, of course, Ring of Honor, CMLL, Rev Pro in the UK, and now The Crash, I guess? I know I don't know too much about The Crash, but we're, we're looking into it because, of course, they've formed a relationship as well with CMLL. They're kind of like the OVW to WWE was. It's, it's, there's relationships everywhere. But yeah, we go through all this stuff on the King of Sports cast on Wednesdays. So if you want to hear about the latest New Japan news, that's the place to do it. But for now, let's have a look at who else is showing up. Like I said, the New Japan Cup is starting next week. And uh, none other than our very own Mikey Nichols, formerly known as Nick Miller in the WWE and NXT as a part of the Mighty, of course, known to us here as Mikey Nichols, one of the original founding members of the Mighty Don't Kneel. Mikey Nichols, he's he's going to New Japan. He's he's not just going to New Japan for the New Japan Cup. It's not like they just announced him as the New Japan Cup, but Rocky Romero even sent out a tweet saying, welcome to Chaos, brother. So Mikey Nichols is an official member of Chaos heading over to New Japan for the New Japan Cup. Very exciting stuff for Mikey Nichols and for Australian wrestling in general. You know, uh, Gino Gambino talks about it this week on in his interview with On the Turnbuckle about you know, kicking open that door and getting, getting Aussie talents into New Japan Pro Wrestling and how he's happy, you know, not happy, but how he's, he doesn't mind if he never works New Japan again, because the door is open now and guys can go in after him. And, and it's such a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing that, uh, Robbie, Mikey, anyone else who may end up over there is, is getting this opportunity to work in Japan, to work for New Japan Pro Wrestling. One of the, I mean, it's probably AEW, I don't know, they're like the second biggest company in the world, New Japan Pro Wrestling. I, th- I think that's without a doubt at the moment. They're the second biggest company in the world. How long they will hold that title, I don't know. But, you know, it's huge to see Mikey Nichols going over to New Japan. Uh, he's obviously been in New Japan before. He's been in Japan before with Noah, where he was GHC Tag Team Champions and all sorts of things. But seeing him in the New Japan Cup, and it's the biggest ever New Japan Cup too. So it's it's very exciting, and we're very much looking forward to covering that one as it happens. Sticking with Aussies overseas for a minute, last week we talked about AJ Istria going to Europe, and uh, the Velocities have now announced that they're headed to England. So they are set to be over there from March 18th to April 4th. They haven't announced any shows yet, but uh, we'll be keeping an eye on it. Obviously, the Velocities one of the best tag teams in the country. Uh, I used to say best up-and-coming tag teams. They're not, they're not really up-and-coming anymore. I mean, we've got Paris De Silva, the Gift Gold Mine, Jude the Dude London... The fantastic tag team. They've traveled the country and now they're looking to travel the world. They're headed over to England. Very excited to see what they do over there. Also in England, uh, in progress, we got the formation of a new unit, the Kiwi Club. Kind of an awful name, but the Kiwi Club has formed. TK Cooper returned to Progress Wrestling and he has teamed up with Travis Banks and Niwa. So, yeah, the Kiwi Club. We got a formation of a group of disgruntled New Zealanders that are going to take over progress. Very excited to see how that one progresses as time moves forward. And for a final piece of news with relation to Aussie wrestlers overseas, Shazza McKenzie, uh, no stranger to Twitter controversy, of course. She is in America for WrestleMania weekend, and uh, she's, she's been trying to get into the clusterfuck on Joey Janela's Spring Break 3, and uh, Joey has said that there's no room, no room for women in the match. Uh, which has led to Shazza McKenzie basically saying, look, I'm going to come. I'm going to be in there. I'm going to do it. I, I don't need your permission. You are a sexist. And it's amazing seeing how many people are getting worked by this. Like people, <laughs> people just being like, he's not a sexist. He works with women all the time. How can he be a sexist? He books women. And just, all, you guys, it's an angle. It's an angle, right? You realize that these are wrestlers and uh, when it, I mean, look, wrestling blurs the lines between reality and fiction. That's when it's at its best. But don't believe anything a wrestler says, man. Just because it's on their social media doesn't mean it's their, the real person saying it. It's still the character. The character is on social media just as often as the real person. I get that it can be blurry. I get that. But I don't think Shazza McKenzie actually believes Joey Janela is a sexist. She's working, y'all. She's working. And uh, it's just, this is really funny to watch Twitter just blow up with with people defending Joey Janela, it's just like, oh man, this is, this is hilarious. Uh, but yeah, so Shazza McKenzie, it looks like she's headed for spring break three, which is great. Uh, obviously, uh, Australian suicide, we talked about last week, Australian suicide 
is going to be a part of Spring Break 3. Uh, Joey Janela, GCW Game Changer Wrestling, Spring Break. Uh, th- these guys are, are sort of paying attention to Australia now, which is great. We want them to pay attention to Australia because Australia is awesome and we have lots of awesome wrestlers. Speaking of awesome wrestlers that we have here, I don't know if you guys heard about this or not, but last week PWA held the final to a pretty cool tournament they've been ho- hosting that they've been hosting the Coliseum tournament started back in October and uh, it, the finals took place at last weekend's show the fight for black medal the winner of the first Coliseum tournament receiving that beautiful beautiful black metal sword Jack Bonza Mick Moretti who won Red Nation Green Nation Brother vs Brother Order vs Chaos Mick Moretti came out on top won the sword he, much to Jack Bonza's chagrin but you know, people were expecting a heel turn. People were expecting a breakdown in the nations. I said it wouldn't happen, and it didn't happen. Jack Bonza presented Mick Moretti the sword, and they hugged. And it's a beautiful moment, which should be available on PWA Play shortly. Hopefully, by the time you're hearing this, it's up on PWAPlay.com. It's not up at the t- It is not up at the time of recording, but I can't imagine it will be too far behind because PWA are pretty good with their turnarounds, and uh, this show looks like an amazing show top to bottom. I really cannot wait to watch it. Uh, We've moved house, and as part of the moving, I treated myself to a new smart TV, and I'm looking forward to watching PWA Fight for Black Metal. It's going to be the first wrestling show that I watch on the big TV. I've I've been watching on my backup TV, like Raw and SmackDown this week. I watched on the backup TV because I'm like, no, I'm breaking the wrestling virginity on this TV with PWA Fight for Black Metal. I, I made sure that the app works. I, I did a test run, and I watched just a match from uh, PWA Diego's last show on the service on PWAplay.com on my smart TV. And now I know it works, and I'm going to I'm gonna watch it uh, as soon as it drops. Uh, if it drops, like if I get the tweet notification while I'm recording this, I'm pausing the recording, going away, watching it, and coming back. That's how important this show is to me. I'm really looking forward to it. And you guys can get around it too. PWAplay.com. Long way of me saying subscribe to pwaplay.com because PWA deserve your money. Now, also last week, uh, I talked about it. Fire Go Wrestling, that's Wrestling Go presented Fire Go Wrestling. That show took place last week as well, and it is now up for free on YouTube. No excuse not to watch it. I'm really looking for I haven't gotten to it yet, but it's on the list. I'm getting to it as soon as I can. Fire Go Wrestling looks like a really good show, so that's one to get around as well. This week saw the debut of Battle Championship Wrestling on Channel 31. You want to talk about accessibility? I mean, I think YouTube's probably more accessible. I think having a streaming service is probably better. But, you know, I, I don't know, but I'm a cord cutter. Do people still watch TV? Like, do people still watch TV? Channel 31, I think it's a Melbourne show. I watched it online, well, part of it at least. Uh, so it was their first ever show. So this is a show from three years ago, from 2016, this show took place. And it's finally seeing the light of day. The Battle Championship Wrestling have been saying for a while now, the footage is coming, the footage is coming, the footage is coming, and now it's here, so so those people can stop complaining about BCW hoarding footage, because they've got, what, 26 shows BCW have done, I think? Because BCW 26 is coming up soon, so in 26 weeks, they're going to be all caught up, so <laughs> it makes sense that they hoarded the footage for a while, right? But yeah, so B- BCW, I guess it wasn't the entire first show. It was just a couple of the matches from the first show. I, I guess the rest of the matches will air next week. Uh, so we saw Sid Parker defeat Gabriel Wolf and Cracker Jack in a triple threat, the first ever match for BCW. We saw Cadman, Big Cousin Fox take on Adam Brooks and the lads. Brooks gets the win. That was where I stopped watching because I had to record the King of Sports podcast, but there is an encore presentation tonight as I record this Thursday night. So BCW will be airing on Channel 31 in Melbourne moving forward. I believe it is at 10 p.m. Yes, because it was 9.30 for me. So it was at 10 p.m. on Tuesday night, or then the encore presentation is going to be on Thursday nights at 11 p.m. So definitely get around BCW on Channel 31. Uh, There's been a, a bit of controversy around BCW in the past, uh, and there's uh, this show is no different, right? So uh, being that it's an old show, the show features someone who has since been blackballed from wrestling, Josh Shooter, uh, a person who allegedly is responsible for sexual assault. Uh, it's it's awful, uh, and you gotta th- you got to think that BCW could have edited that match out, BCW could have left that match out. Uh, they have since responded to some of the controversy. At least we think that's what the response is. To, uh, because it's hard to tell with the wording of it, but BCW did send out a post on Facebook this morning, on Thursday morning, 
saying that it's been brought to their attention, of course, through fans, uh, colleagues, and friends, that there's an ongoing issue of mistreatment uh, in, in the wrestling fraternity. So these are their words. Uh, we're unable to comment on the facts as we are not privy to the same. Notwithstanding, we would like to utilize our platform in a positive manner and offer support to anyone that has been quiet or their pers on their personal mistreatment of any form. We implore you to seek out the proper assistance, and if anyone needs assistance and does not know where to start, please feel free to contact us through our page and we will refer you on for some free legal advice. So basically encouraging anyone who knows anything about uh, sexual assault in the community to come forward and to and that they will be supported. And I think this is a great thing. I think this is a great thing. I think BCW cop a lot of flack from a lot of people, and uh, especially online. Uh, you know, people like to talk, right? And they cop a lot of flack for for you know. I mean, look, I'll, I'll give them flack for odd booking decisions for sure, right? Because <laughs> I'm a wrestling fan, and that's what wrestling fans do: uh, odd booking decisions and stuff. But it's a place for people to work, and well, I want it to be a safe place, obviously. And from what this sounds like, and I can only go by what I'm looking at in front of me on this screen, it sounds like they want it to be too. And they didn't know that things were going on. So if you know anything, if you know anything about things that are going on, whether it's at BCW or anywhere else in the wrestling community, you need to speak up. You need to speak up because we can't, we can't have this sort of thing. We can't have this sort of thing going. Like wrestling is for everyone. It really is. And no one should be getting sexually assaulted. Uh, no one should be bullied if bullying is happening. Like, these things need to be stamped out. And, uh, you know, uh, good for BCW for, for speaking in this way. Some people are going to give them crap. Be like, oh, yeah, where, why were they when they were, you know, partnering with AWE and all that sort of stuff. But then they've they've commented on, on the post saying that they're not going to be partnering with AWE moving forward. So it's... These situations are tricky and complicated. And all I can go by is what's in front of me. And it looks like these guys want to... Uh, make a commitment to bettering themselves moving forward. And uh, we should, we should applaud that. We should, we should definitely still scrutinize, right? Keep our eye on it, make sure that they actually stick to what they say. But this is a great message. It's a very important message. And if you see something, say something. Wait, that's a terrorist thing, right? I don't know. But if you know of any misbehavior, of anything untoward that has gone on, you should speak out. Uh, we want this to be a safe community. We want this to be a, an inclusive community. Uh, if you, if you personally have suffered any, uh, issues, I mean, we're, we're here for you, right? We're here for you. If you need someone to talk to, you can reach out to us on social media channels, you know, shoot us a DM. We're happy to support you in any way you need. We, we, we want to help with this stuff. We don't want this stuff to keep going on. But, uh, on a more positive note, on a more positive note, PCW, Professional Championship Wrestling in Melbourne, they have announced that they've sold 1,000 tickets pre-sell to Grand Slam. Now, this is an event that takes place on March 16th, so it's still a couple weeks away. So it's still a couple weeks away, this Grand Slam event taking place at the State Basketball Center, and they've pre-sold 1,000 tickets, making it one of the biggest modern wrestling shows in Melbourne. Uh, Lucas Daniels and Mark Cage are set to clash over the PCW National Championship at this one. It's going to be the biggest show in the company's history. Big congratulations to everyone at PCW, at Professional Championship Wrestling. Uh, the Southeastern Entertainment Center, where they normally run their shows, from everything I hear, is one of the best wrestling venues in the country has amazing production value and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to going to a show next time I'm in Melbourne I definitely want to check it out but yeah they they hold their ignition shows there every week and then they do bigger shows every now and then and this Grand Slam show is the biggest that they've ever done big congratulations to them for pre-selling 1000 tickets I just want to point this out as well this is on the same weekend so the, the same night actually that across town uh, Melbourne Championship Wrestling will be presenting Clash of the Titans, and there's probably going to be five to seven hundred people at that show too. So the market for wrestling in Melbourne is huge. The fact that there's talent to support the two shows, the fact that there's fans to support the two shows, it's amazing. This is a good thing for everyone involved. Congratulations, PCW. Now, over in Melbourne Championship Wrestling on that night, of course, fun time Phil will be fighting for Arya's career in Melbourne City Wrestling when he takes on Loverboy Lockie Hendricks, who I caught up with at the ACW show last weekend, and we're about to get to that interview, but before we do, last story for the week, I like to cover things that have happened in Australian professional wrestling at the actual shows, the storylines, right? I know, so a story that I have highlighted a few times on the show was that of Riley and Blake Mitchell. Riley, of course, the Evolve champion in Adelaide Championship Wrestling, the queen of Adelaide Championship Wrestling, and she got there by performing intergender matches, primarily because a lot of uh, because there aren't many women in Adelaide wrestling, even less in Adelaide championship wrestling, 
and it's sort of a necessity thing. They have to do intergender matches, and they've they've taken they've put a lot of effort into making sure that the crowd will accept these intergender matches. Uh, and then Blake Mitchell comes along, and he you know has his rants on his podcast about about women's wrestling, and he claims that he doesn't uh, belong in the same that that Riley doesn't. He claims that Riley doesn't belong in the same ring as him, and they've really built this story for quite a while. They had their blow-off match at the last show, Rise to Glory, the match. You know, I question this a few times. If you go back and listen to some of the Aussie Graps episodes, how much of this is a shoot? How much of this is a work? Because if it's a, if it's all a work, then he's been working this gimmick for a while of hating women, or, <laughs> or hating women's wrestling, I should say. He doesn't hate women, he loves women, he thinks everyone should own one. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> he, he has, you know been anti-women's wrestling on his podcast for a long time and uh of course anti-intergender wrestling as well he thinks the whole thing's a joke and but then they're building this story between himself and riley so i think to myself well it must be mostly just a work right like for shoot he's going to get in the ring with her at some point to blow this off or else what the hell is all this story going for the match itself lasted about two minutes it was a very quick match he tapped out to the queen lock and he is no longer going to be a part of Adelaide Championship Wrestling. So I'm still here scratching my head how much of it's a shoot, how much of it's a work. Because a two-minute blow-off match where they barely touched and, you know, she locked in the submission finish to very quickly to get him out of there and leave the company. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I've been thoroughly worked. I have no idea what's... Like, and and I work with I work with Adelaide Championship Wrestling, obviously. I've, I've talked to a few of the wrestlers there in interview form, and I have... Uh, I've done some training there at their school, but then of course I got my hernia, so I stopped training, but then I started doing social media for them where I, I just post to Instagram story for them at their events and things. And, uh, and even through working with them, I still, I still can't tell. I still can't tell how much of it's a shoot, how much of it's a work. It's amazing. I love it. So, uh, definitely pay attention to that one when it comes out on the YouTubes, uh, because they had a new film crew. They did live stream. Loverboy Lockie Hendrix's match with James Cruiser. James Cruiser the loser, I was calling him, but he picked up a win over Loverboy Lockie Hendrix. The interview with Loverboy that, that I had took place before the match, and I didn't even know that his match was going to be streaming when I sat down to talk to him. I didn't know that his match was going to be streaming, but yeah, his match streamed out live. It was the first time that uh, Adelaide Championship Wrestling have done that. I love, 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 love that so many uh, companies are jumping on the live streaming gimmick. It's amazing because, you know, we want to watch wrestling live. We do. Wrestling is one of those things. It's it's anything can happen, you know, uh, and that's what captured the imaginations of, of the world in the 90s is anything can happen in wrestling. And uh, it, that, that works best when it's live. So Adelaide Championship Wrestling jumping on the live train is fantastic. So Adelaide Championship Wrestling jumping on the live streaming gimmick is fantastic. And I I really hope it spreads. I hope that more companies start doing the live streams. but. For now, let's cut to the interview that I did with Loverboy Lockie Hendricks prior to his match at Adelaide Championship Wrestling Rise to Glory, and then I'll hit you after the interview with all the things going on this weekend in Aussie Graps. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hey everyone, just want to take a second to tell you about one of our new sponsors, Outbreak Nutrition. Outbreak Nutrition are creating supplements for survival, sharper minds, quicker reflexes, all the energy you need to take your performance to the next level, whether that be on the field, in the gym, on the gaming field. That's right. They have specifically designed gaming supplements as well to help you focus on those late night sessions. They even sell coffee, you guys, at Outbreak Nutrition. You can get coffee pods. You can get coffee beans. You can get supplements for the bedroom as well if you want to enhance your performance there. These are performance enhancing supplements for every aspect of your life, specifically designed by gamers for gamers to stay fit and healthy in the gym, to stay sharp and focused on the game, and to dominate in all areas of life. So check out OutbreakNutrition.com, and for being a listener of our podcast, they will give you 10% off your order when you enter the code B+. That is B-P-L-U-S at checkout. So make sure if you want to stay on top of your game, if you want to take your performance to the next level, OutbreakNutrition.com, enter the code B+, at checkout. Sorry to interrupt the podcast, B-plus players, but I just need to take a second to tell you about Threadbox. Threadbox is a subscription service for men that makes looking good easier than ever before. Just fill out a few questions to start building your style profile, and from there, you will be paired with a stylist who will send you new threads once a month, so you don't have to worry about checking the stores and finding new clothes. 
It's like having a personal shopper and stylist at your fingertips, and you just sit back, relax, wait for your awesome new gear to arrive in the mail. They sent me a box this month. I got a new pair of jeans. I got two shirts. You can check out the unboxing video on the Facebook page. And the best part about it is you can get in touch with your stylist by email at any time. So if you need new singlets, if you need new long sleeves, if you need new shoes, if there's something specific you want, you just let them know what you need and they'll tailor the box to your specific requests. It's a completely personalized service available on any budget. You'll always get way more value than you pay for because Threadbox work with all the best brands. Boxes start from just $40 and if you use our code, the B plus 15 at checkout today, you're going to get 15% off your first box. So what are you waiting for, man? Like, if you want to look better with less effort, head to threadbox.com.au and use the code, the B plus 15, to get your box today. All right, so I'm currently backstage at the historic Estonian Hall, and uh, joining me, one of the greatest all-around talents this country has ever produced. The man who ended the career of the mad bastard, he's a game changer, and of course, Uncle Paul's favorite Australian wrestler, Love a boy, Lucky Hendricks. How are you, sir? You forgot to say I am the star of my own web series and that I am signed by Uncle Paul and am relocating to Florida. Right. Do you, no, do you not get this? Or is, is this my fault? Is this what I'm meant to expect from the B plus Podcast is that what I meant to expect? Huh? I wanted to get to that because because you've you've called some people B plus players before. The majority of Australian wrestling, yes, yeah, and uh, I'm I'm proud to be B plus. Why are you proud to be B plus? It came from the Daniel Bryan thing with me, All right? So he's been referred to as a B plus player before, and uh, I thought if he's B plus at wrestling, then I want to be B plus at what I do, which is the podcast. Because he's, he's but, but why why are you aspiring to be B plus? Do you know what I do? Do you know what I was doing when I was a kid? I was aspiring to be an A plus player because an A plus player succeeds at life. Right. Do you not get that? If you're a B plus player, you don't succeed at life. Do you know who else is a B plus player? Fun time, Phil. And you know it's going to be. Very good for lover boy. When I get his dumb broad of a girlfriend fired from MCW. Right, right. So, I mean, I've been to a few MCW shows and they felt like a very in- inclusive kind of environment. I don't know if, if calling her a dumb broad is... I, mean, I, I don't think it's insulting enough. I, I think I'm being quite polite calling her that. There's a lot more things I could call her. Do you want me to list them? No, no, I think that's that's fine, that's fine. But it, we're we're in Adelaide at the moment. How's how's Adelaide treating you? Not very well. I I, I don't like Australia. Do you know where I want to be? I want to be in Florida, but unfortunately, you know, these things take time. Yes. So for the meantime, I have to be in this rinky dink country, and Uncle Paul is tasking me all these things to try and improve it. But Australia, being the B plus country it is, won't improve. Right. Well, I want to I want to start at the beginning because obviously, I mean, you're from Australia, right? So uh, Australia is capable of producing A plus talent like yourself. Uh, so I want I want to start at the beginning. Where did you get your start? What made you? What made Love Boy Lucky Hendricks decide to become a pro wrestler? I have always been good at this. That is the reason Uncle Paul signed me. Because I can do so many things. You need a good actor? You've got me. Hell, you need someone to do a musical? You got me. You want someone for movies? You got me. You want someone for Letterman? You got me. You want someone for anything? You've got me. Because where I'm going, that is a place that doesn't just need wrestling. It requires having talents in all sorts of fields. And that is why I started in professional wrestling. Right. And, and so have you done, I mean, you talk about like if you need a musical done, you, you call, call Lover Boy, right? Have you, have you done musicals and things? Before? Yes. Yeah? I, 2017, I was part of the first ever Australian wrestling musical. Unfortunately, it's, uh, Done with Cracker Jack, you know, these things, greatness, sometimes you have to work with people who are, you know, beneath you, 
but I was the star in it. Which is funny, isn't it? Someone who'd been wrestling three years at the time was the star of that. And I was in that with a man who had been wrestling for 20. Yeah, an Australian wrestling legend. Like I say, Australian wrestling is B+. plus. I'm going to be a legend in Florida, son. Right. And, and so you mentioned, of course, uh, it, you know, the, the time with Cracker Jack. Now, you are, of course, the star of your own web series at the moment, The Lover Boy Farewell Tour. It's yep. going great. Uh, but it's not your first foray with, with internet fame. Of course, there was uh, your Bastard TV that, that you featured on uh, quite a few times. How was it working with Cracker Jack? There is a reason I ended his career. He was holding me back. But I'm not here to talk about Cracker Jack. Cracker Jack's in the past. When was the last time Cracker Jack had a match, huh? It was against me, December 16th, 2017. And look what I've done since then. I've gotten signed by Uncle Paul. Ask me more questions about that instead of trying to look at my past for some idiotic reason. Okay, well, I mean, like I said, people, people like to know, you know, when someone is going to the heights that you are going, people like to know where you came from. People like to know the story, how, how you got there, what got you there. But, mm-hmm. but if, if you want to talk about Uncle Paul, let's talk about Uncle Paul. How come uh, you have been sort of allowed to, to talk about this so freely? It seems like something that's not done a lot. Uncle Paul sees something in me. You see, it's a bond like no other. We have each other on speed dial. I can't wait to go to Florida to finally get the respect that I deserve. Because Uncle Paul is going to treat me lovely. He's going to treat me like the A-plus player I am. Right. And he called you, I believe it was on on Boxing Day, yeah? I mean, take us through that day, the day you got the call. It was Christmas Day. I it was 1 p.m. Christmas Day. 9 p.m. Christmas Eve in Connecticut. And I get the call from Uncle Paul. But I'm not going to tell you all the details. If you want all the details, you can watch the Lover Boy Farewell Tour, Episode 1, where all the details are revealed. Have you not watched all the episodes, Greg? Uh-huh. Have you shown me a disrespect and not watched the best damn Australian, no, world web series? Huh? No, I, I have. I've been watching. I, I'm, I'm a big fan. The, the latest episode was my favourite. Uh, you, you, you visited the MCW Academy. Yes. Those are... Uh, Kids were very lucky to have a talent like myself impart my wisdom and I could tell that at the end of the class that I got to those kids. Yeah. Do you see anyone, when you look at the, when you look at the class coming up beneath you, do, do you see anyone that uh, we should be keeping our eye on here? Why do you think I made the game changes? That is the group Everyone has to keep their eye on. Hey, look at Matty Wahlberg. Look what he's doing now. Just got accepted into the Farley Dojo. We're taking over everywhere, son. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just last night, I think uh, he uh, receiving a PWA title shot in the future at some point. So uh, we've also got in the Game Changers the Brat Pack. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a personal favorite of mine uh, over in Perth. I mean, what, what was it you called him again? He's the... One, two, three, king. King, right. Right, because Taylor King. I like it. Yes. I like it a lot. He's a, he's a child star, though. He's, he's been going through some things. Are you helping him out? Taylor King and I talk a lot. Taylor King is a very, very talented individual. Uh, that is why he is a game changer. Things he goes through, I understand what he goes through. We live similar lives. People expect so much from us, but they don't, they don't take, they don't take what we do and react nicely because all the people out there are bullies. 
We're victims of these fans' bullying. We're victims of your bullying. B plus bullying. I, I don't think I've, I've bullied anyone. Look, look at the disrespect you've shown me. You, you, you don't know references of my web series. You don't know certain aspects. That's disrespect. Right. I, okay. I mean, look, I'm, I'm really happy to have you here. Uh, and this is, this is kind of getting confrontational. I, I don't, I didn't want this to be confrontational. Uh, like I said, I am a big fan. Uh, you, you sort of, you, you have experienced some, some online bullying from, from some of the fans. And, as a result of that, you enlisted a, a social media manager, David Geller. It's Daniel Geller. Daniel Geller. I apologize. Yeah. Disrespect again. Yeah. I mean, it's I, I have it in You've, my you've been dealing with Daniel Geller on emails and that, and I you have. don't even know his name. Yeah, it's it's one of those things though, and, and this isn't not me, of course, but there are people I've I've heard people talk about. You know, is Daniel Geller even? You know, a, a person. A, a lot of his his writing. Episode four. Thank you. Next. Right. He's 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 arranging the date for you. How's that going, by the way? Have you heard back from Ariana Grande? It's one of those things. I'm going to Florida soon. So when I go to Florida, I'm sure Lavari will be the next big thing in all of the world. Right. Because there is no one who can. Be the next dance death more than Ariana Grande because Ariana Grande empowers women. She's a game changer. You see what I did there? Yeah, you're giggling. You're yeah. giggling. I like it. I like it. It's it's a, this this farewell tour that you're on. Yes, I think the big question on everyone's lips is when do you go? That is between myself. And my beloved Uncle Paul, that is none of your business. When I go, though, you'll know, because I'll make an impact like no other son. Right, and and uh, are the game changers, the whole clique that you've been setting up, are they sort of going to be holding things down here when you go? Are they going to be going with you? There's a lot of confusion like I, around it. Like I said, the game changers are taking over. Not just one company, not just two. We're taking over the world. Right. And we're not even just taking over one division. We've got one of the best tag teams in the world. Yeah. I, do you have, uh, do you plan on, on having any women in the game changes? It has been discussed. It has been discussed. But I'm not going to, you know, name anyone right now. Right. I mean, because, I mean, people would, I, I guess, assume that Miami may be a good fit since, you know. Miami is a very good employee of mine. She helps when certain people try to cheat or try to take advantage of Loverboy. She knows her job and she does it well. Of course, yeah. And so the farewell tour has brought you, uh, it's taken you up to Sydney, it's taken you all over the place, it's brought you right now. Here to Adelaide, where... Uh, you know, Unfortunately. <laughs> uh, it's your first time with Adelaide Championship Wrestling. Uh, what's the mindset? Like working a new crowd, a new company, opponents that you aren't necessarily too familiar with? Look, the crowd has the honour of seeing me. The crowd doesn't factor into it. I say a million times, if there was no one out there, I'd be doing this because I'm damn good at it. I don't do this for them. I do this for the money. And for the new opponents in that, I am going to Florida. I am going to be fighting the best wrestlers in the world. A plus. So I see all of Australians as B plus. And if I can't beat B plus, well, I just can't fathom that. Hence why Funtime Phil's girlfriend is going to be fired. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I guess the last question I have here before I let you go is something you you say a lot. Yeah, Momo. Mm-hmm. A am I a Momo? Yes. Everyone, everyone, pretty much is a Momo. I can almost name, I can name a list of people who aren't Momos: Uncle Paul, Aunt Steph, 
Ariana Grande, Miami, Daniel Geller, The Game Changers. Right. What is a Momo exactly, and how does one stop being a Momo? Is it something you can change? Everyone, Everyone asks me this. If you're a Momo, you're just always going to be a Momo. And people ask me what it means. Why do you need meaning in everything? Can't we keep a little mystery? Oh, when's Lockie going away? Oh, we need to know that now. No, no. I like to keep mystery. Fair I'm a very intelligent man, Greg. Yeah, absolutely. Some things aren't for the Momos to know, I suppose. But we do want the Momos to, to sort of watch your journey, though. So where can people find you online if they want to keep up with Loverboy? Uh, Loverboy, Lockie Hendrix, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can watch my show, The Loverboy Farewell Tour. The Loverboy, Lockie Hendrix media team and Daniel Geller do a very good job on that show you can watch me on pretty much any australian wrestling company because i am the hottest wrestling star in australian wrestling at the moment i am an a plus player filled with b plus players all right well thank you very much for stopping by i appreciate you coming on the show man Mm. see you later son by the way it's daniel Gala, you can send your thank you note to Daniel Gala, you momo. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Lover boy Lucky Hendrix. Yes, I am a momo. I made some mistakes. <laughs> then he was ruthless. He jumped on me for the mistakes that I made. I mean, I'm a lover boy fan. You know? I am. I'm I'm a Loverboy Lucky Hendrix fan, and uh it was an experience uh getting to sit down and speak with Loverboy Lucky Hendrix. He is uh an amazing talent who is gonna go far. He's he's gonna go far. Uh he apparently doesn't like me though. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh if you liked that interview and you like Aussie Craps interviews in general and you want to hear more, you can always get around Wrestle Radio Australia this week. They sit down to talk with E. C. Diamond. Uh, who is an up-and-comer from Queensland. Uh, I say up-and-comer, but he's been doing it for four or five years. He's been doing it since he was 14. Holy crap, he's young. He looks like a star. Uh, definitely, definitely one to get around. And uh, on the turnbuckle, our good friends on the turnbuckle sat down to speak with Gino Gambino in what is probably my favorite episode of On the Turnbuckle. They had a really lovely interview with Gino, and it's definitely one you should check out. He talks about New Japan, talks about mental health. He's got some stories to tell. It's it's a really good interview, and uh, I look forward to being able to speak to Gino Gambino one day myself because he appears to almost interview himself. It was <laughs> he just sits there and tells stories for ages. It was great. Uh, voice for radio too. Gino should probably start his own podcast. Just putting that out there. Gino, if you want to be a part of the B Plus Network, brother, let me know. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Uh, Moving on, that, that's all I've got in, by way of uh, Aussie Grappler interviews this week. I haven't seen a JXT Talk and Stick podcast pop up this week, so uh, that's all we got. Gino on, on the turnbuckle and EC Diamond on Wrestle Radio Australia. But this weekend, there's all sorts of wrestling going on, so let's break it down. Starting in New South Wales, AWF are back in Blacktown on Friday night. Team USA, Keegan Brettel and Eric Walker take on DNA, DJ Sonic and Albie for the AWF Tag Team Championships. Whiskey 6 is challenging for the Misfits AWF Commonwealth Championship and much, much more. Tickets start at $15. On Saturday night, Nui Pro return to Club Maitland City where Carter Deems will take on Shane Sheffield Sinclair, looking to move up in the rankings for a potential shot at Matt Rogers. And Matty Wahlberg defends his middleweight championship against the incomparable Robbie Eagles, representing the Bullet Club, of course. This one is going to be a cracker. Tickets start at $10. Also on Saturday night, Wrestling Go holds You Go Girl, an all-women's event the first time that they're doing this one. Stella Nix makes her debut in Sydney, taking on Candy Lee, who featured on last week's Fire Go Wrestling, which we talked about. You can you can check already on YouTube. And PWA, Fight for Black Metal as well. Available soon on PWAplay.com. Candy Lee's everywhere at the moment. Uh, she should be too. But uh, Stella Nix is one to watch for this year, for sure. Going viral with her Slingshot Code Red gif from Hot Summer's Night in, in her home company, EPW. Uh, she may be a challenger for Paris De Silva's Gift Goldmine title, to be honest with you. Uh, we also have Lux taking on the team of Indy Hartwell and Steph DeLander, the artist formerly known as Facebook. She has unmasked 
and uh, is going by the name Steph Delanda. Tali goes one-on-one -on -one with Bell Pierce. Jessica Troy takes on Kellyanne. Melina's going to be there. So much more happening. Australia has a super deep women's talent pool. And uh, these shows popping up everywhere shows it, and it's awesome. Tickets for this one start at $10. That one is, of course, at Marion Community Center. In Canberra, ICW and CPW join forces to promote Decade 2, celebrating 20 years of Canberra wrestling at the Tuggeranong Community Center. Gimpy will defend his CPW heavyweight title in a gauntlet match, and Wrath defends his world title in a Loser Leaves ICW match with Chris Shadows, and much, much more. Tickets start at just $5. Over in Western Australia, in Perth on Saturday night, All Action Wrestling present their Anniversary 12 show at the Baldivis Recreation Centre. Felix Young defends his No Limits Championship against Ricky South in what has the potential to be a real show stealer, in my opinion. Craven looks to continue his 10-0 anniversary streak against MechaWolf450. Zenith and Ajax are going to go to war in a 30-minute Ironman match. It's not even the longest Ironman match in the country this weekend. That one's going to be crazy. And of course, Seth Kincaid defends his AAW title against Chris Target. The main event, though, the fate of All Action Wrestling hangs in the balance as The Shark and Tom Ledbetter face off inside a steel cage over ownership of the AAW brand. Tickets are just $20 for that one. Also in Western Australia this weekend, NHPW are performing as part of the Bustleton Fringe, so get down to that one and check out some fun entertainment for the whole family. In Queensland on Saturday night, IPW present Ace of Impact at the William Duncan State School. Ricky Rembrandt takes on Jesse Love for the IPW Unified Championship. Zeke and Dino will defend his heavyweight title against three unnamed opponents in a gauntlet match. And much, much more tickets start at $5 for that one. And in Victoria, huge weekend in Victoria. Kicking off on Friday night with BCW 26 taking place at the Whitehorse Function and Convention Center. Big Cuz takes on former TNA superstar Robbie E. Melina defends her BCW championship against Vixen, hot off a trip to Japan. Mad Dog defends his title against DCT, and Dowie James and Mick Moretti will face off in a 60-minute Iron Man match. The first time these two particular individuals have had this particular type of match for this particular company in this particular building. I kid uh, <laughs> with the marketing there. But seriously, this card does look amazing. Tickets start at $20, and you'd be crazy not to want to see some of those matches. On Saturday night, New Age Wrestling are live in Albion. Richie Taylor takes on Curtis Day and Paul Thornton in triple threat action. Lozen defends her women's championship against Vixen, Aria, and Michelle K. Hazlick in a four-way match. And Jake Wilder defends his South Pacific title against Sicko Smacks. All this and much, much more for as low as just $15. Meanwhile, PCW hosts the final ignition before their big Grand Slam event we talked about earlier. This one will not be live streamed on Facebook. The only way to watch will be to be there at the Southeastern Entertainment Center, one of the best wrestling venues we have in Australia. So get around it. Tickets are $20. Elsewhere in Melbourne, Warzone Wrestling Australia present March Mayhem. DCT takes on Jean Wen and Dowie James defends the Warzone Heavyweight Championship against the mercenary Slade Mercer. Tickets start at $15 and rounding out the weekend in Melbourne, big one in Melbourne. Sunday evening is an MCW and Evie's Disco Diner joint production G-I-R-L, Glow in real life, they used to be called. Now they're just called Girl, G dot Earl. I don't know how to pronounce it. Girl, let's just call it Girl. Avery takes on Candy Lee in her Melbourne debut. Aria and Chanel Phoenix go one-on-one. -on -one. Michelle Hazlick faces off against Vixen. Tar Lee goes one-on-one -on -one with Kellyanne. And Indy Hartwell and Steph Delander will face off in singles action just one day after teaming in Sydney for Wrestling Go. The girl shows have been amazing so far. You can catch those on MCW Encore On Demand. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy to see them succeeding and continuing on. So if you haven't been to one yet, you need to get out to this show at Evie's Disco Diner. Tickets are $30 and it's a great show to take along a non-wrestling fan too as well. It's very inclusive, very safe, very happy, very fun environment. You have a meal, you watch the wrestling. What more could you ask for on a Sunday afternoon? That's it. That's the weekend in wrestling as it appears to me on my screen here. Thank you so much for listening to Aussie Graps Friday. And uh, if you like what we do here, please hit the subscribe button, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. You can find me at Greg Unchained on Twitter, at the Greg Unchained on Instagram. We collectively are the B Plus Wrestle on Twitter because wrestling wouldn't fit. We are the B Plus Wrestling everywhere else on all social media channels. We're on Spotify, we're on YouTube, we're on you know, everything. We're on everything. The B Plus Wrestling. And of course, if you want to support us directly, patreon.com slash the B Plus is the place to go. You can get all kinds of fun stuff. We had a call-in show last week. We had a custom episode this week, which you know you can't listen to because you're not a Patreon subscriber. Our custom episodes where our, our top-line producer-level 
uh, Patreon backers do get to tell us what they want us to talk about and who they want to talk about. So if they want to hear me and Dan does review an old show, they'll tell us. If they want to hear, if they want to hear me, Mr. Mysterious and Aiden talk about our favorite hardcore wrestlers, we'll do it. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want us to talk about, we will talk about it. We are dancing monkeys at your beck and call over at patreon.com slash the B plus where you also get to listen to all these wonderful episodes ad free. Speaking of ads, you can always support us by checking out our sponsors, the muscle hustle in the app store. You can also check out our supplement support uh, by outbreak nutrition, uh, formulated by gamers for gamers for work in the gym and for staying up late and crushing it on, on the killing fields of, of, you know, I don't even know any first person shooters, man. I don't play first person shooters. Anyway, (laughs) <laughs> that's, those are the ways you can support us of course threadbox as well you all know about threadbox by now check them out like share subscribe five star review if you like what we do and thank you so much for listening for one andre you're not doing this get out let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. you just made the list oh my god so no speak english Dummy. The worst town I've ever been in. It's still real to me, damn it. Coming. Yeah. Hold three. The moth covered. 